Quiet on the set. The early, early Pepple Show is about to begin. Oh, hey, boys and girls. It's Mr. Menace here on our final episode of the Early, Early Pepple Show. But before we get started, we have a message just for you Pepple students. I think you're going to like it. Take it away. Million dollar face. Whatever. Wow, we've come full circle, haven't we? To think that we are sitting here in the exact spot that the early, early Peckle show first aired. A show that consisted of Mr. Menendez and his daughter dancing, doing an exercise, the pledge, some news, and then dancing again. Wow, we've really evolved, haven't we? But as they say, all good things must come to an end. And this is actually a perfect time for this new show to end. We thought nothing would be more fitting than the staples of our show to host it. The people that were there when we started. I think you know who I'm referring to. That would be Carl Clumsy, Benny the Brat, and Ricky Responsible. So, grab your popcorn, grab your Cokes, and sit back and enjoy our last episode. Okay, I think my foot's better. Ow, that really hurt. Ow. Hi, boys and girls. My name is Carl Clumsy, as you can kind of tell. Anyway, I'm really excited because I get to introduce our first speaker. Her name is Linda Tinney, and she is a career transition specialist. <laughs> Hold on. I got one more thing I got to do before I go. My arch enemy board. <laughs> <sighs> <laughs> See, I told you. I told you. Oh. Ow. Take it away, Linda. Hey, Pepperell Elementary School students. My name is Linda Tinney, and I am a career transition specialist at Georgia Northwestern Technical College. What that means is I do dual enrollment for high school students that are wanting to take college classes. Um, one of the questions on the interview sheet says, what type of education or training does your job require? So my job requires a master's degree. And what that means is it is a degree after four years of college. So after you graduate from high school, you go to college for four years um, and get your bachelor's degree. And then after that, you receive, uh, you can go back to school and receive your master's degree. What classes should students focus on to prepare for your career? So my um, master's degree is in business. So I had a lot of business classes when I was in graduate school. Um, you can either have your master's in that or um, some of my coworkers have their master's in education. So either one would work um, great for our job. Do you work with others or by yourself? So typically um, in my office, I work by myself. Um, however, um, I do go to the high schools and I work with the counselors and the principals and the teachers. So in that case, I do work um, with other people. 
and um, our office at GNTC is small, so I work um, typically with them too, with the, my coworkers. Do you work indoors or outdoors? Mine is an indoor job. Why did you choose this job? So I wanted to get into um, a college setting, so I applied for this job after working in financial aid for a year or two. So I um, have enjoyed working in the high schools and seeing students cross over to college. How many years have you had this job? So this job, I believe I've been in for four years. and financial aid, I was right at two years. So I've worked at the college for around six years. Do you have to travel for your job? Yes, I do travel for my job, but mine are all local schools. So I have Rome City, Floyd County, and Polk County schools. So I go to all of those high schools and um, I test and I advise on what classes they should take. So I do lots of different things in the school systems. Describe your typical day. So I actually do not have a typical day because every single day is different. Um, I sometimes test uh, at, in the school system and then sometimes I um, get students accepted and that is usually in my office. I do that work. Um, so I deliver textbooks sometimes. So I do lots of different things every day. So every day is not the same as the day before. What is the most satisfying or exciting things about your job? So I love to see students um, take classes and earn something. So what I mean by that is they can earn a certificate or a diploma or a degree that will help them um, when they graduate from high school. So they could go straight to work um, if they wanted to and then be able to earn um, all of um, more money or get a promotion or do something they really want to do and they did not have to spend four years of education to do it because they um, started earlier. What are some things you don't like about your job? So typically, um, I like everything about my job except for um, there are some stressful times in our job and that is the beginning of a semester um, or preparing for the semester. So in college, you have three semesters. You have one that starts in August, one that starts in January, and one that starts in May. So typically, um, the month or two ahead of time is really, really busy on into um, the month after school starts. So um, if I were to pick one thing, that's probably what it, what it would be. Um, so a fun fact about our school is we have nine counties um, that we service, and we have about 2,500 high school students that are taking college classes. So. Um, I hope you've learned a little bit about my job and about GNTC. Thank you. You know Benny's getting paid the big bucks if they're making him come on here for a fourth time. But I gotta let you in a little secret. It is disgraceful that you let a mega celebrity superstar just do the pledge segue. I mean, seriously? Seriously. That's a waste of my talents. And I'm going to talk to somebody about this. This is just not acceptable. It's ridiculous. Ridiculous. You know what? For, forget it. Just go to the pledge. I'm done with this show. I'm done. Celebrity, they give me 30 seconds of airtime. I wouldn't want to see my face for five minutes. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, 
under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Hi, boys and girls. <laughs> How long has it been? Okay, I got a little confession to make. You probably see the spill on my shirt. Huh. I've been drinking a lot of milk lately, trying to get my bones strong. <laughs> and I had an accident. That wasn't very responsible, now was it? <laughs> okay, they brought me on the show and I'm very excited because I get to introduce a very special host for our career day. His name is Davey Godfrey, and he's going to be talking to us about the Army. Oh my gosh. I am super excited, and I hope you are too. Heavens to Betsy, we're going to have a great show today. <laughs> you know what? I can't leave without this. I'm Ricky Responsible, and that's the responsible thing to do. <laughs> Okay, boys and girls, I hope to see you soon. <laughs> Sooner rather than later. <laughs> That's a knee slapper. Hey, kids. My name is Davey Godfrey. I'd like to thank Kathy Henderson and Pepperell Elementary School for giving me this opportunity to tell you all about a career path that some of you are invariably going to take. Although I'm retired from military service, I did spend 20 years wearing the uniform of the United States Army. It is a noble profession that takes a great deal of sacrifice at times. There are many paths to get into the military, Army in particular. I joined the Army National Guard when I was still in high school. I was 17. I joined right before my senior year, went to basic training in the summer between my junior and senior years. And you're gonna start seeing recruiters coming around when you're a sophomore and junior in high school they're going to start talking to you, trying to get you uh, to join up after taking the aptitude test. I encourage all of you to keep an open mind about that. I graduated high school, uh, later went to Jacksonville State University in Alabama, go Gamecocks. I completed Army officer training while I was there called ROTC, Reserve Officer Training Corps. I became an officer in the Army upon receiving my undergraduate degree. I traveled frequently because of my military training or deploying overseas in support of military operations, the, the wars that we've been in. As all of you that are, that are in there right now, grades three through five, we've been at war the entire time you've been alive or some sort of military operation uh, since you've been alive. That's all you know. And we've been doing this since 2001, right after 9-11. Uh, so a lot of travel went into my job. Um, I, I went to places like Kuwait, Egypt, Germany, and Kosovo. And why did I choose the job? Uh, service was ingrained in me as both my grandfathers, my father, and my uncles all served in the military. I even have cousins that served. I feel it's my duty as a U.S. citizen to try to do anything I can to serve my country. The Army works as a team made up of individuals with different talents. Um, so we all relied on each other to make the mission happen, and we have to be individually good at what we do, but we have to come together as a team, just like in sports. And it was satisfying while I was in. One of the, the questions was, what is satisfying about what I, what I did? It was satisfying to help soldiers and their families with any personal issues they had so they could focus more on doing their job to defend this nation. And what I didn't like, just like with any organization, there are going to be times that the right answer is in front of you and you know what the right answer is, but you're unable to choose it or act on it because there's a process it has to go through. You have to develop patience. And that's what I ask of all of you students be patient with your teachers during times like this or just in general, uh, because eventually the right answer will end up finding its way. Uh, the Army works both indoors and outdoors. My job was mostly indoors as I handled Army human resources. A typical day starts out, you get up in the morning, you do what's called physical training, you exercise, run, strength training exercises. I encourage all of you to stay in good shape, eat right, exercise, that sort of thing. Stimulate your mind as well, because the Army wants fit warriors who are also intelligent and can synthesize information. A lot, a lot of meetings. There's kind of a running joke that, well, in almost any profession, there are a lot of meetings, and the Army has to have meetings to plan things, um, because uh, it's, it's an organization that's very rigid and very structured, um, but also gives an opportunity for folks to uh, have some individual thought to try to make the organization better. And then helping out, again, soldiers and their families with issues that come up during the day, whether it's a pay issue, 
a promotion issue. If somebody's trying to get promoted, a lot of issues with that. Awards. Some unfortunately, sometimes there's discipline punishment. A lot of you may be familiar with that. Uh, we hope not. <laughs> Uh, but that's part of that's part of my job in the army doing human resources, and then you plan for large events, um, what, whatever events going on. Whether you're going to go overseas for 30 days and do an exercise, then you're constantly planning. You're constantly making sure that goes off without a hitch. Now, regarding any education or training that you may need, I just encourage all of you to continue doing well in school. Uh, do a great job on the military aptitude test that you're going to take when you're most likely when you're a junior in high school. I encourage you to do, do very well on that because that's going to tell you what aptitude you have, even if you don't go in the military. It's going to tell you what you're good at. I encourage all of you, especially for, again, I'm going to pitch for the Army here. I'm not a recruiter, but I'm telling you, if you just want to see what you might like if you were to join something like the Army, then go go to GoArmy.com, G-O-A-R-M-Y.com. You all are familiar with the Internet, I'm sure. Uh, it's not. It shouldn't be a blocked website on your computers, even if you have them through the school. And go on there, check out, see if there's anything you like, and then start setting your goals about what you want to do. Even if you don't join the military, the, the the world needs people that can give back and can do things. Wow, what a show! You know, when a boxer retires, he takes his gloves off in the center of the ring, and lays them down as a symbolic gesture that he's not fighting anymore. So I'm going to take my megaphone and I'm going to put it on the floor as a gesture that this is our last show. But I want to leave you with this message. Although you see Mr. Mendens every day on this new show, I represent so much more. I represent a group of hardworking individuals, a group that will stop at nothing to provide the best education for your children. A group that behind the scenes and unselfishly gives up a lot of their time to create lessons, great papers, come up with meaningful ways to best provide instruction. Who am I referring to? I'm referring to Pepper Elementary. And it starts with our principal, Ms. Penley. Our assistant principal, Mrs. Pryor, and then it trickles down to all our staff. We have one focus, one goal. What is that goal? That goal is that we are here to help your kids be as successful as possible. And we take that very seriously. So we will always be here for you and we will continue to try to provide the best education possible, no matter what the circumstances. Because that's not only the Pepper way, but it's also the Floyd County way. We love you. Bye bye. It's the last time you get to see my house. <laughs>